It's finally here. It's time for the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Final. We've seen incredible performances from all over Europe and beyond, featuring the craziness, campness and amazing vocals that we know and love from the competition. We're joined today by our very own Euronews Eurofans from different countries to discuss the standout moments of the contest so far and our predictions on who will take home the trophy. We're joined by Rebecca from Ireland, Sasha from Ukraine, Iago from Spain and Charlotte from Australia. So uh, let's get down to it. Guys, I have to say I'm actually quite bittersweet because um, it's the grand final, so I'm super excited. But if that means Eurovision is almost over. But I'm not going to dwell on sadness or anything like that. Sasha, let's start with you. You weren't here with us last time, and I see you're very prepared with your Ukrainian flag. Tell us, like, what can we expect from Ukraine's act this year? Who are they? I feel like I'm always very well prepared for Eurovision, you know, that's, uh, and it's, it's a really big deal in Ukraine. We love watching Eurovision every year. Now, this year we have Tvorchi. Uh, this translates as creatives from, uh, from Ukrainian. And I have to say, this is a very different Ukrainian music to what we are all used to when it comes to the Eurovision Song Contest specifically. You remember Kalush Orchestra last year? Love that. Uh, go a, a with Shum uh, two years Love ago. Them. Love that, right? <laughs> fantastic. But it's still, uh, we used to go more with some sort of folk vibe, a little bit of more Ukrainian. Now, this is a completely different uh, thing. The song uh, Heart of Steel. A uh, very strong name, of course, uh, and it goes with, you know, despite the pain, I keep going and I keep fighting, of very course, topical. representing yeah. everything that Ukrainians are, have been going through over these more than a year already. And they said that they are actually have a great purpose there. They want to raise more money to to save the babies, to help those prematurely babies that have been born during the war, during the full-scale invasion, and do need help. Uh, the, an, uh, another interesting thing about them is that actually the whole, how we chose them, how we voted for them. Now, the contest was in February, in December, sorry, gosh, February, in December, and it took place in a metro station, the safest place. And uh, that was December, Maidan Square, Maidan Metro Station, 90 meters underground to make sure that everybody's safe and you could hear if you watch it you could actually hear the station was closed for transportation mm -hmm. right for commute but you could actually hear two trains just going back and forth back and forth and you could hear that but other than the sound you couldn't see any difference that was a great show with great ten performers and yes indeed most of them did follow this more folk music vibe of ukrainian music and yet ukrainians did vote for Tvorch, so i'm really looking forward to seeing their performance yeah that is a vibe i kind of really love because i really love um i think who is it it's uh uh, is it Slovenia? No, it's Moldova this year. It's kind of gone for a similar folky kind of vibe. They're actually one of my favourites. They're in my top five. So I really love that. So it is strange that Ukraine has kind of gone away from that this year. Um, but thinking about Ukraine and the fact that UK is hosting on their behalf this year, uh, can you tell us a bit more about the collaboration? How has that been received in Ukraine? Are they happy with how things have gone? Like, how, how has the collaboration between the two countries been seen? Look, we obviously wish we could have had Eurovision in Ukraine. That's something that's really so important for us. We love watching. It's a huge deal there. And I have to say that last year when Carlos Orchestra won, there were lots of hopes and we were a little bit, how come we're not allowed to host Eurovision? We deserve that. We want, we want to do that. Of course, we understand now that we were a bit too optimistic on doing that. But uh, love how uh, this year you could see so much Ukraine. I mean, the, the BBC video with uh, Liverpool hosting, right? That yeah. such a beautiful video. And you, we do feel this strong support and representation there. You could see it in those videos before every act, right? You could see some bits of the cities or places in certain cities yeah, all over Ukraine. Yeah, the postcards, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. all the postcards, you could see all the performers who are also performing there like uh, yesterday, uh, so Thursday evening, we saw uh, amazing carols as well and all this uh, fantastic performance. That we was incredible, I was watching because I was watching it with a few friends yeah. and when we suddenly heard Carol of the Bells, we were like, oh, why is this, why is this being played? It's not Christmas, but then they said like that's actually an originally Ukrainian tune, so yeah. that was a... And that's not many people know about yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's a great fact and I loved it how they managed to put it and the performance after the first semi-final was fantastic, how it represented everybody, how it represented the flags of the countries who are participating in the revision with those silhouettes, the figures of Ukraine Ukrainians who are being who are now forced to be in those countries and yet who feel so welcomed in those countries. We're really grateful to have this representation in the UK. Um, the only thing I would say that it is rather hard for Ukrainian fans to go and watch it because of course yeah. when it comes to the neighboring countries or the rest the Schengen area countries, this is a visa-free regime with the Ukrainians. You can always go and 
without any problem and watch it. When it comes to the UK, they do need a visa. And this is a very complicated process, I have to say. It takes time. Sometimes you have to travel to another country to apply for the visa. It is pricey as well. So this is the only thing why not so many Ukrainians could be there these days, although much more, you know, Ukrainians wanted it's to be there. It's a long travel to go. You can do it in the situation that now is dealing Ukraine, you can go to another country. Like, not all the people can do it. Yeah. 100%. And when you have to apply for a visa, you know, even less so. But what about the costumes? I know there's a delegation of Australians that just were only wearing uh, yellow and blue. And I just thought that was so beautiful. And they were saying, we want it to be in Ukraine. Yeah. It's got to be the UK. We're dressing up as the colours. We don't care about the other acts. It's got to be for Ukraine. That's what I loved. It's so, I mean, it just gives me all the good Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, just saying that. Yeah. I just, yeah. it was and you could skin, see. don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> and you could see all these flags in the room as well. They're everywhere with the fans. They're holding it, whether they're supporting Ukraine or any other country. They're also there to show their support to the fact that Ukraine did win. And we're still looking forward to seeing all the winners. We're looking forward to seeing Kalush Orchestra, we're waiting to see Jamala with, uh, you remember her amazing mm. performance a couple yeah. of years ago with the Crimean Tatar yeah. song that was very strong. We are, of course, waiting, and I'm so happy, I'm going to actually say that now on the record, for my all-time favorite, Verka Serdyuchka, who will be there, who's oh, just yes. an amazing <laughs> act, all-time legendary uh, Ukrainian performer. And, of course, Tvorchi and their costumes as well have a very interesting story. They do have the names of those babies that have been born since the full-scale invasion oh, wow. in Ukraine in order to support them. And that's the whole thing. Of course, when it comes to a heart of steel, it's not about the heart that doesn't feel. It's about the heart that is so strong to survive, to go through that. And also, when it comes to Ukrainian families and mothers who have had courage to give birth to new lives, often doing so in the basements, in the bomb mm -hmm. shelters. So this is... There's so many symbols, even in their costumes mm. as well, you could see that. And from a British point of view, I'm obviously very happy that we're hosting, but it's also great just to see the friendship between our two countries. I mean, we've always been friends, but I think especially now, without getting too political, um, yeah, the UK and Ukraine, I think, are very, very strong allies now, yeah. so it's great to see that represented. Um, okay, moving on, Rebecca, commiserations, I'm oh, sorry, but Ireland, like, you're out again. Uh, very what sad. went wrong? Because um, <laughs> you <laughs> are still the kings of Eurovision. You still have that record, but maybe not for much longer. Oh, well, Wild Youth from Dublin, I mean, those guys are great. Like, they've toured before with Louis Capaldi and Niall Horan. Um, and their song, We Are One, I mean, it was a very powerful, it was a very powerful tune. They had great stage performance. They did their absolute best, but they failed to qualify. And the, and the situation is we haven't actually qualified for Eurovision final since 2018. So, I mean, that's, that's quite a long time now when you think about it. And, but we've performed 50 times in total for the Eurovision. We've got seven wins under our belt. But the fact of the matter is we haven't won since 1996 with Emer Quinn and The Voice. And when you think back to Irish wins, it's very much about the, the power ballad, right? And when you think about how Eurovision has changed, you think about televoting, you think about these grand scale arenas, the formula is different. It's not about having a powerful ballad anymore. You need to have, you know, excellent showmanship. There needs to be that stage presence. You need to have that mm -hmm. sex appeal. And I think maybe that's what Ireland is like. I think so, because like you say, it was a good song. I really enjoyed it, but I feel mm -hmm. it may have been something I just more listened to, like maybe chilling as opposed to like, you know, a big spectacle on the Eurovision stage that we're usually used to. Um, but talking about uh, people that lost out then, who else lost out from the last two semifinals this year that sort of caught your eye? Who, who would have deserved a... Uh, oh, well, sorry, when through? I say, uh, no, well, not so much that, but mm -hmm. who, what other, I don't want to say flops, but you know, people yeah. that lost out that maybe mm -hmm. we should make a, make a mark of a mark, basically. Well, Azerbaijan for me and Malta were two acts in the first semi-final. They, they, really, they didn't really leave a mark, really. And Azerbaijan, they've done quite well since they entered Eurovision, but those, the, the twins, they, they didn't qualify. There's, there just wasn't... There wasn't enough oomph there, really, and same with with Malta. I found uh, I found that act a little bit a little bit strange, and that's really, the thing. Really, with Malta, yeah, I actually yeah. was the opposite. I didn't really give it a second thought, and then mm -hmm. as soon as I watched it, I was actually really impressed, and I was disappointed they didn't get through. Oh, so I'm surprised. Controversial yeah, controversial yeah, there, yeah. but you know. For me, the second the second semi final was definitely stronger. I think we had we definitely had some stronger performers there, and even with the with you know when it comes back to power ballads, Lithuania, for example. 
example, that was a power ballad, but the vocals, her, you know, her range, everything was fantastic and there was such passion in her voice as well. Um, so she definitely deserved to go through. Um, and Cypress as well, another really good vocalist. Um, absolutely, you know, bashed it out of the park. Yeah, that's someone else who I hadn't really considered and then I watched it and I was like, yeah, yeah, that should get through and it did get yeah. through. So. And we have to mention just before moving on, Dustin the Turkey. Like, can, can you? Because I <laughs> is feel, this where it all went wrong? I feel yeah. <laughs> that British and Irish humour is fairly similar, so I feel that we kind of get it. But for other Europeans, um, I think you might have to explain, like, yeah, who is yeah. Dustin the Turkey and why was he there? <laughs> well, one year we decided to enter Dustin the Turkey, which is our resident puppet. He comes from um, a daytime children's uh, TV show, um, The Den on RTE. And while he is, you know, very much part and parcel of the Irish cartoon identity, I suppose you can say, he just wasn't understood on, on the block. Um, and he came out and he was, I think essentially it was a shopping trolley decked out to look like a little mini Dex. And it, it just it was it was cheesy for all the wrong reasons. It really it didn't it didn't um, you know it didn't wow the crowd. But memorable, memorable. Yeah, for and sure. you know he got a little a little shoe in the other day. Yeah, Irlande du Zappoin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, Charlotte. On the flip side, Australia, your strong record continues. Tell us about it. It does continue, and I'm not being biased, but it 100% was the best performance last night. <laughs> I, I it was entertaining. I'm opposite to Rebecca. I actually found the second semi finals. So so dull until yeah. Australia came out. Fair, the I mean, power yeah. ballads, right at the end, the, oh, I was like, went out with a bang. Yes, it went out with a bang, yeah. it surely did. But Australia's mm -hmm. performance, it was electric. It was, like I said last time, I really think that song is perfect for Eurovision. I love the alternative metal. I loved the guitar solo with the leg on the car. I loved the lead singers, like iconic Maine, just blowing in the wind and just watching the crowd. I would have loved to have been there in real life. I thought it was awesome. They deserve it. It's our last chance to win 2023, so hopefully, who knows? Do you think there is a, an appetite to renew the contracts so that Australia keeps coming back? I really did. So the whole reason why, I really do rather, I think the whole reason we're in Eurovision is because we have such a strong fan base mm -hmm. uh, and we've been, you know, so many Australians fly over wherever Eurovision is held every year and that's why we ended up getting that invite in 2015 uh, as just a guest performer and then we're invited to actually participate the following year. Um, which is just amazing. So I think really it's amazing. All coverage, you always see an Australian flag, even if um, we're not in it, even if we've, uh, we're not doing great. There's so many Australians there. We just love it. I'm almost certain we'll be invited back. Well, I think, how well, are who the would vibes? want to go to Australia? I know, yeah. 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 ready to go back there. But go how are the vibes during the Eurovision? Because for example, in Spain, you can do a party of Eurovision with your friends and you can go to a bar also, but maybe, your grandma with your mother and your family are watching Eurovision too because, okay, it's Eurovision Day, let's watch it because it's a tradition. Is the same in Australia uh, or is it just for young people? So this is my first Eurovision watching it at a normal time. Yeah. Normally yeah. I'm up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., <laughs> uh, but that's the fun of Eurovision in Australia. It's okay. like a sleepover. They, like, there's like town halls that are all decked out for it. You've got people from all over the world coming together, families, they're camping. Great. Some people have gone out the night before and haven't gone home. <laughs> Uh, it's just it's, otherwise it's, it's like a breakfast party. It's like That's a breakfast party. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. early just, breakfast. Like it's hard to go to sleep afterwards because you're you're on such a high. Like I remember the year Maniskin won, and I was we were all just like rocking out at like six a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it was so fun. Uh, so that's why I think it's so because it's so um, alternative and it's so unique for us. That's why we love it so much. I hope you will continue because now I want to go to Australia one year just to watch your. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. People it's like roll their eyes, but it's I, it's fun. Well, to enjoy well, a breakfast. Party. Exactly, but if not, there's going to be like what well, Europeans waking up, you know, in odd hours, and you're going to have it in normal hours yeah. in Australia. Then. <laughs> exactly. Well, I do hate to rain on your parade, but I believe that if Australia wins, they have an agreement with a European country uh, to host it on their behalf. Oh, so. oh, oh it's never been held in Australia. <laughs> Sorry. Petition, yeah. start yeah. petition, bring no. it to Australia. Yeah. We'll Can all you go. imagine? Yeah. Oh, I would love it. But look, I have great feelings about Voyager. I would just, I would love it to happen for them, but. We'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll yeah. see. Um, yeah. Speaking, Charlotte, quickly about the conversation more generally, uh, conversation, the contest a bit more generally, uh, we heard there was a bit of controversy before about them trying to X factor it up this year, you know, give it more of an X factor style for format. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so originally they weren't going to do, they were going to bring the voting on stage and then they were, they were going to try and scrap the voting, um, the conversation 
backstage. But um, fans were really upset about this because they thought it was just unnecessarily cruel. You know, Eurovision fans are quite unique. <laughs> they, are, you know, they fly around the world for this contest. They want every little bit that they can get. One performance isn't enough. There's the semis, there's the finals, there's the dress rehearsals and all that sort of stuff. And they just want, especially for the fans who can't be there, they want every element of Eurovision. Mm -hmm. And they're traditionalists at heart as well. Even though they let Australia and Israel and all the others in, they, they want the traditional format of a competition. So there was a lot. And what they were really upset about is that BBC and EBU basically just said um, they had a change of mind. That's why they weren't doing it. There was no real justification. It was for like timing purposes. They weren't sorry about it. Uh, but, you know, I was looking on Twitter last night and everyone seemed the spectacle hasn't taken away from any of these proposed changes at all. And it still seems to be going ahead. I have friends there and they're, they're loving it. They reckon it's one of the best layouts that they've witnessed this year. They're there for fun and reporting. It seems to be a smooth operation so far. Jealous of all those people there for fun <laughs> and reporting. Me like, too. I mean, being paid to watch Eurovision, like, oh, so amazing. <laughs> right, Iago, Spain, obviously, you're an auto qualifier like mm. the UK, like Ukraine this year. Um, but Portugal's song, I think, was very, very good. They're obviously qualified, and I feel that they went for a very similar feel as Spain this year, quite Iberian, sort of folksy. Do you think that's gonna, they're gonna cancel each other out? Do you think one is better than the other? They're gonna steal points from each other? How's that gonna go? Well, I'm not going to throw shade against, <laughs> <laughs> against throw Portugal, <laughs> but I think our, our performance is unique, our song is unique, and it's not unique because we are showing the Mediterranean tradition, we are showing the Spanish tradition, and not a, um, with the point of view of the topics of Spain. We are showing something very, very original, and it's nothing can copy us this year. Maybe the people can, sh can watch it as something similar, but they are not. And as I said in the last video, Blanca Paloma can be very proud of her performance. She's going to kill it. And if, she didn't, if she's not going to get the points that she deserves, I expect that Portugal and also Italy, our brothers, are going to give us the 12 points that we deserve. <laughs> Mediterranean because, alliance. Well, <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> no one never talks about that, but that happened, that exists. And when that happened, when that, uh, when that don't happen, you can hear all the families in Spain like, shouting and everything and <laughs> claiming to God, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, it does raise an interesting question. Do, do you guys think that, like, block voting or kind of, you know, similar neighbours voting and stuff is a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, we've spoken about it before, the mm -hmm. UK and Ireland. I do feel that the UK, when, when we get the opportunity, you're not throwing shade, but when we get the opportunity <laughs> to vote for Ireland, we generally give you a bit more than you yeah. give us. Um, I don't know, <laughs> do you guys think it's a good Sorry, thing? Sorry, I'm just thinking, because like, <laughs> I'm remembering that here when the UK got zero. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was just we, so cruel. I mean, okay, it was yeah. terrible. That was, I was there watching. It was mm. just after lockdown, and it was yeah. the first night out, I think, that I'd had in a pub um, since being everything was opened up again. And so I was really looking forward <laughs> was to it. And that happened, the double zero points. And it, he uh, didn't deserve that no, at all. It wasn't no. the best song, but it was not zero <laughs> worthy. But, it was terrible. But then we went from zero to hero yeah. last year, so, you know, can't complain. Ireland well, I against. think, yeah. <laughs> thanks of the vote of the people, now it's impossible to get zero points. Well, well, in theory, yeah, but in then theory. Right. <laughs> but then the UK well, sorry, it. but because what uh, that happened to Spain one year, uh, there was a uh, there was a singer that, okay, it was the day of uh, ah, what's the name of that song? Yes, uh, do it for your lover. Oh yeah, I remember that year. No one in Spain wanted that him to go to Eurovision. At the end, he went. I have to say that I was the one, the one of the minority that said, mm, don't worry, guys, he's going to do it well. And thank God that boat exists, because if not, I think, I thought in that moment that he was going to get zero points. <laughs> Well, we've done it, and I can tell you it's not a fun feeling to get there. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of, you know, success, uh, Iago, you said last time that Sweden was your favourite other than Spain. Is that still the case after seeing all the semi-finals? No. Sweden is going to win. I'm sure about that. And, and pff, I hope that also, well, also for Australia. I will not mind if Australia wins because if... <laughs> There's the last year of them, and also they have been very, very good all these years. It's like when you have a very good student, no, a new student, because it's like the exchange student. Oh my God, we have to prize them. But if not, Sweden is a good option. Lorraine also deserves maybe to, to get that record. And Spain, of course, Blanca Paloma, she risked a lot with that performance, and it's very good. 
guys, any other, other than your own countries, or again, sorry, Rebecca, I keep looking at you, but <laughs> other than your own countries, like, uh, who, who you're You're allowed to have two options. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, Austria, I think. Oh, po, just po, 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 such po, po, a catchy, po, po. catchy yeah. song, and they just bounced off each other, and just, yeah, the costumes as well, I was loving all the the, the leathers, and then the, the red and the white, it just, it looked really, really cool. And um, I know it's a controversial one, but I really like Finland and cha cha cha. I think I for love me, it as I well. think people I, I've are really talking about me Finland. Back, yeah. It grew on me. I didn't really like it at first, and Finland is often a you know a, one of my top fives every year for some reason because I generally like rock and, and that kind of thing. But I, yeah, I really love it now. Like I really, really do. Mm -hmm. um, Charlotte, what are you thinking? France now. Yeah, I still love yeah. France. France is still my favourite, I have to say, but like Finland, I do like, but yeah. They weren't even in my top five, but now they're, they're there now. Yeah. yeah. Just saw like, you know, the rehearsal that she did when she's on that pedestal and when, she, when I feel when France really French it up, that's when they do their best. Me so too. I think they've it's done it this year. It's also the interviews she gives afterwards. I oh, generally yeah. think that it's a beautiful song and it's so important and it's fun. She's very charismatic as well, so isn't she? So charismatic, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sasha, other than Ukraine? Uh, I do love Sweden a lot. I think that was an amazing performance. Uh, and apart from Sweden and France, because these are like the two most popular, I do love Czech performance with Vesna. Okay, yeah. This all female, such a strong sisterhood performance. They're singing about, you know, you're my sister, you're beautiful, and the crown is yours and nobody will take it away, which is. As a Ukrainian, I hear them. That is a very strong message there. But I do love the whole very strong sisterhood feeling in that one. Great. Great, fantastic. I just have to say that, you know, I'm still rooting for the UK. I still think May Muller is going to do well. I'm not sure she'll win. I just have to be honest. But I'm hoping for at least a left-hand side of the leaderboard kind of finish. I also just have to give a shout out to Slovenia I love, mm -hmm. Moldova I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, Austria, France. You know, I've got so many favourites. Where's Australia? Where's Australia? Australia. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> exactly. you, I well, think you've flown. Because you said we're not going to go to Australia if you win. So that's, you know, but what we're do still you expect? Don't it's time for everything. <laughs> That's I mean, cool. <laughs> you've flown the flag for Australia, and yeah. I agree with everything you said. Okay. We have to watch together, Eurasian. I know. <laughs> I'm going too, too much, too emotional on that one. Well, that is all from us. Don't forget to tune in to the Eurovision Grand Final on the 13th of May and follow Euronews and Euronews Culture for all our coverage of the big event. Thanks for watching and happy Eurovision. <laughs>